My name is Ruggiero Lufeo. I'm working on philosophy of science and uh, at the Logos Research Group in the University of Barcelona. And today I'm going, uh, we'll be talking about uh, scientific explanation. Well, uh, first of all, um, I belong to a particular approach uh, to, scientific, uh, to uh, philosophy of science which believes that the main goals of this discipline is to rationally reconstruct scientific theories. What do we mean by rationally reconstructing scientific theories? Well, um, somehow we try to axiomatize these paradigmatic theories of, of different um, particular science, trying to uh, identify their underlying structure. So um, trying to identify if they use natural laws, what is the explanatory power, um, if they make good predictions, and all this stuff. Well, why we want to uh, uh, rationalize scientific theories? Because once we have this kind of theory rationalized, we can try to clarify certain epistemological, metatheoretical, and methodological problems about science. One of these is scientific explanation. And um, well, you will see that we have a current discussion in philosophy uh, regarding scientific explanation, which wonders whether we can um, find some uh, common futures to all scientific explanations. So let's imagine that we go and um, study and pick some theory of physics, some other in biology, and see how they um, explain the phenomenon. Uh, Mon the monism idea is that we can find some common structures or common features of this kind of explanation, whereas pluralists believe that it's not possible to find this kind of common futures. Uh, well, this, um, in my thesis, I will be working and trying to defend this monist position about scientific explanation, and our roots are in um, uh, work from an um, empiricist philosopher from the 19th century called Hempel. The main idea that he presented it was that in order for a theory to be explanatory, this theory is not working now. Right. These uh, theories have to appeal to a natural law. Uh, and this was kind of necessary condition for a theory to be explanatory. Uh, this kind of uh, theories uh, or models of scientific explanation, which appeal to uh, a natural law in order to be explanatory, are called uh, covering law models of scientific explanation. Well, a covering law model, this idea is that um, we have this, uh, what we call the explanants, which are the phenomenons that we believe that have the explanatory power, and we add some general law from nature, and with, with these two kind of things, we can make expectable the phenomenon we wanted to explain. So my uh, proposal of my thesis will be to try to work for one of these particular uh, model of scientific explanation, covering the model of scientific explanation. Um, mm, but the, mm, this kind of models uh, um, have a, has to deal with a particular problem, um, which is um, that if we want that um, Every, every particular science appeals to um, laws of nature in order to be explanatory, we need a good uh, characterization of what a law of nature is. And even if we can um, have a general thought about what, what is the law of nature, which is something that uh, involves necessity and all of these things, we philosophers of science try to go deeper and try to find some necessary and sufficient conditions to define a uh, law of nature. The problem is that we, from philosophy of science, we have been using this standard point that defined uh, law as a universal and exceptional irregularity. Uh, the problem is that with current science, um, we come to physics, we come to biology, and we realize that it's really difficult to find so these kind of regularities working in nature. Uh, then, one of the other problems that I will try to deal with in my project thesis will be to try to find a kind of wide concept of uh, nat nat natural law, a law of nature, uh, in order that all the, all the uh, particular science that use this kind of general um, um, statements can fulfill this uh, definition of law of nature. And this is all. Thanks for your attention.